Hey friends, Audrey Henley here. Today I'm going to be talking about crutch words, filler words that you can take out of your writing, so stay tuned. So I'm going to be going through a laundry list of words that happen to litter my manuscripts when I'm first drafting. So I do uh, Command F, Control F in my Word document and find these and go through each instance and try to clean them up. So I do that probably every round of revision. I go through the same list of crutch words and try to edit them out. So I'm just gonna go through some of these. Walked over. For some reason everyone's walking over somewhere when you can probably just say walk or you can use a more descriptive verb there uh, to describe what they're doing. They sauntered or they, you know, maybe they're talking to someone and while this happens, walked over just happened to appear a lot in my manuscript, so I cut it out. Interrobangs. So interrobangs are when you use a question mark and a exclamation point at the end of the sentence together, and that annoys some people, and I tend to use them a lot. So I try to cut out some extra ones that aren't super needed. Uh, ellipses. So dramatic pauses in sentences don't tend to be super helpful. I cut a few of these out as I go. You kind of want to use ellipses in really dramatic points, not just everywhere. There was and there were. I tended to start sentences with like, there was a dark cloud coming or something like, where you could start it with a dark cloud loomed or something. A little more active where the dark cloud is the subject of the sentence instead of there. Anything with could and would, she could see, she could feel, she saw, she felt but felt is a filter word. So filter words are words where instead of describing the thing that the character is like sensing, seeing, smelling, hearing, whatever, you are saying they saw this, they heard this. So because you're in that character's point of view, you can assume that they're hearing or seeing that. So it's always better to just describe the thing that they're sensing. So that's words like realized, felt, anything like that. And you can always Google filter words and get a sense for those. So watch out for those. I definitely don't cut all of them, but I cut a lot of them. Sigh. For some reason, all my characters are sighing constantly. So I have to cut those out a lot. So here's one that's a little strange. Starting a sentence with it or there. For some reason, every sentence of mine seems to start that way. So to help with sentence variety, I like to cut those out. And I also, I don't know, something about it and there starting a sentence, usually that would mean that it or there is the subject of your sentence. Whereas usually you want something exciting like your main character or something coming toward you, something exciting to be the subject of your sentence. So always a good idea to search. You can search um, period, space, it and period space there and word will pull those up for you. These are some qualifying words like almost, rather, somewhat, maybe. Search for all of those and cut them out wherever possible. That versus who? So this isn't really a filler word but it's just a common mistake I make that I search for. Using that where you should use who because you use who whenever you're talking about people. Sudden. <laughs> Everything happens suddenly in my book, so gotta do a search for those and cut out like 300 suddens. LY words are a classic, get rid of them when you can. She said softly. I really like she said softly once in a while, but you can overuse it. And you could say she whispered. So this is an interesting one. It's any verb that requires a preposition afterward. For example, she woke. So some people would argue she woke up is just a little wordy, like why do you need that up there? So you can search for those prepositions and try to cut them out. So I'll just read off the list I have here. Sit down, kneel down, up, stood up, straightened up, up above, wake up. So some, I'm just gonna read off a few more qualifying words that I tend to have and that's uh, just, usually, seem, she seemed to, things like that, going to, became, making. So you're probably noticing a pattern here, right? So a lot of the things I am trying to cut out in my fine, fine combed revisions are words that filter the experience through the main character. So instead of 
bringing your reader close to the main character and, just, and have, letting them assume that everything described is through that character's perspective. They are saying, you know, Mike felt earthquake instead of the ground trembled. So if you say the ground trembled, it's a lot more immediate. Another thing I do is cut out a lot of progressive tense. A lot of people get confused about progressive tense and passive voice. And to be honest, I don't notice a ton of writers having issues with passive voice. I see it more with academic types, like in academic papers. So passive voice is where you want to avoid saying what the subject actually is. So you say something like, the protesters were arrested. The protesters were arrested, but who arrested the protesters? A more active way to say that would be the police arrested the protesters. Passive voice is all about getting rid of the real subject and making something else the subject. The cookies were stolen. Maria stole the cookies. See, so it's sort of this weird thing where you take out the real subject and hide it. So it's never good, but I only really see this in like government documents. Like you'll see it a lot in um, nonfiction, in anything where you're trying to hide who the real subject is. But I'm not really gonna talk too much about passive voice because I don't see it that much with fiction writers. I just don't. What I do see is a lot of progressive tense. So in the present tense, this would be she is walking versus she walks. And in the past tense, it would be she was walking versus she walked. Walks and walked are a lot shorter than was walking, right? Or is walking. It does feel a bit wordier to keep in present progressive or past progressive tense. So a lot of writers prefer to take those out and you can just search ing and find them sprinkled throughout your manuscript. And to be honest, like I notice this most when listening to audiobooks. I always hear when for some reason she was staring versus she stared. Like it always bugs me when I hear that was verbing thing because I just don't, I don't know. It's like, why are you saying it in a slower way? So I like to take them out. Yeah, definitely an easy thing to fix. It's not that complicated to understand. Progressive verbs, you do want to use them if, let's say she was walking when she saw a bird fly by or something like that. So you want to use the progressive there because it indicates that she was actively doing something and then this other thing happened. So that'd be a good place to use it. Um, but I think most places it can be cut. That's all I've got for you today. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little session on <laughs> words I overuse in my manuscript. Let me know below some what, some words I missed. Um, what do you tend to find in your manuscript that you have to cut out? What do you overuse? And let me know how that ing search goes. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little bell thing. See you guys next week. Bye.